What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the OTK Podcast, the show where we discuss anything and everything that is shaping the world today. Since it is an even-numbered episode, that means we're talking about something having to do with faith, and I thought I would have my best friend, Connor Baker, on today to talk about one of my favorite uh, topics, hence my my skeptical hoodie, uh, is the fact that Christian movies are pretty much terrible. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that today, and we're going to try to be nice, because, yeah. you know, we don't we don't want to tear anybody down. Right, because we don't have anything nice to say. <laughs> don't say anything at all. <laughs> That's right. Thumper from Bambi, right? Uh, no, we're going to be talking about that today. And Connor was a fantastic pick for this conversation, because... A, he and I go out to movies all the time. I hate every single one he takes me to see. I don't know why. We just have very different tastes in movies. But this guy consumes more movies than anyone else on the planet. He found that movie pass thing, and now yeah. he is just straight up addicted. But not only is he a huge movie fan, uh, watches tons of movies, but he also has done uh, video work for one of the biggest companies in Texas, and he's also a media pastor. So he has lots of experience in consuming, critiquing, and creating media the same way that I do. So I thought it was a great time to uh, have this conversation. Thank you, Connor Baker, for being on the show. Oh, thank you, Caleb. I'm so <laughs> glad to be here. Yeah. We're going to try not to make an international incident out of this or, or end any careers. But uh, we, want to, we want to go ahead and dive in to this topic of Christian movies and why they are so terrible. But before we get there, I want to talk about, from your perspective, what makes a good film? What what makes something enjoyable to watch on on all of the the categories? Yeah. Um, well, obviously the uh, the story has to do with everything. Um, you're not going to sit through a movie or even like a three minute video or a TV show, whatever it may be, if you're not intrigued by the story. If it, there's not something drawing you there, but with that, what creates the story? Um, there's so many different elements. Uh, the acting, the acting's poor, or the acting has to be, you know, at least decent to watch. Uh, the editing plays a huge role in it. Um, making sure your shots are consistent, but not only are they consistent, are they different? Like, are you having shots that are wide, um, close, medium, you know, all sorts of different stuff. Um, the soundtrack plays a huge role. Um, the color correcting, believe it or not. Um, you know, there have been movies or TV shows I watch where the color correcting is terrible or super weird or maybe not color corrected at all. And then it, uh, you, you look at it and you're like, man, this is really poorly made. Yeah. And especially us Americans, if there's something that we feel like isn't well made, we are automatically turned off by it. Unless, you know, some there's some like, you know super secretive things that are like really big for some reason i don't know why so they're... bad it's good sometimes very rarely very rarely bad is good in movies or film or whatever it may be um but man film is one of those things that like there's so many different elements and there's lots of different things that play the role into what makes it good and you know every, everyone's different just like you said like i my my taste in movies is a lot different than yours. It's I true. like lots of movies. It's very it's very hard for me to not like a movie. And so like you said, when we look at Christian film and Christian media, a lot of times it's terrible. And for me to think something is terrible, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. You know, like I, I love and, and it's and it's funny too because acting acting is, is a big is a big thing and plays a big role, but at the same time, there's things that I watch like, for example, the TV shows Flash and Arrow. The acting is really not that good. Like it's super cheesy, right. but the story to me is compelling. It, exactly. And yeah. it's 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 making me want to come back and rewatch it and, and see what the next episode is or see what's coming out next, even though the acting is maybe not, you know, A list, but still it's good enough that makes me want to come back. But when we look in like the realm of Christian film, um, a lot of times the acting is worse than that. And still the right. story is not good enough to make me think, eh, you know, that was good. But Well, I want to give a shout out real fast. The thing that kind of inspired this conversation was a YouTube video that we stumbled on. Uh, I think it's called Why, Why Christian Movies Suck. I'll make sure to put it down below. And I think it provided a lot of really practical examples because it's really easy for people to, like us yeah. <laughs> to sit and, and dog on Christian movies that happens in a lot of our inner circles. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot harder to make a quality YouTube video giving the actual examples from Christian films on on why it's just lazy filmmaking or right. bad 
storytelling or whatever it is. So I'll make sure to, to link it down below. And I'm going to reference some uh, different numbers and things that they talk about in that video. So if you guys are, I would encourage you to go watch that. It is a far more uh, constructive yeah. look at, yeah. we're just kind of just talk, talking here, but right. that is a real deep dive into what makes Christian movies terrible. Yeah, check it out. So sure. what about Christian, you, we talked about what makes a good film, whether it's acting or storytelling or, you know, basic things like color correcting and editing. What things within most Christian movies do you notice? I'll, I'll give I'll give my first. Uh, the most obvious thing to me is just the unrealistic nature yeah. of the reactions of characters in movies. You know, yeah. the the uh, uh, like facing the giants to me was a was a great example of like these moments where this coach would be like two inches from this kid's face as he's doing like bear crawl. I know everybody loves that scene and I'm going to get so much hate for this, but he's like, he's like, I want you to blindfold yourself and just go. And he ends up going like twice as far. Right. He does like the whole football field. He does the entire football field. And you're just thinking like, okay, so was that kid giving 50% effort every other seat? You know what I mean? Like, it's just un, a lack of realism of like, I, I get what they're getting at and I appreciate kind of that emotional draw. But when you're talking about a sport as kind of like gruff as football, yeah. and you think about what a football team would be and, and how young football players are in general, they it's just a little bit unrealistic to me. Oh, for sure. And that's like, that was the first thing that I thought too, um, whenever, you know, we started talking about, you know, Christian film and all that is it does seem very unrealistic, like everything yeah. about it. Um, like down to the conversations they have or the times that they reference Jesus or God or whatever it may be. Every, like, every conversation. Right, Somehow exactly. Jesus like, comes exactly. Like I, I work in a church and I, I work with college students and, you know, real life people. And it's like those conversations in the movies, they aren't real. Like yeah. no one, no one yeah. talks like that. And I will say like, I actually do know people who talk like that. And it's like, no offense if you're a person who talks like that, but you're not reaching people. Like yeah. if I'm going to be honest, yeah. like those are the people that people look at Christians and they're like, those guys are crazy. And it's like, yeah, because um, if you just talk like that in the real world, it's like people turn or turned off by it. Well, I think one of the big parts of a movie is the character, being able to put yourself in the character's yeah. shoes. Yeah. I, I know you and I often have the debate which movie is better, Inception or Shutter Island. Yeah. But the reason that I am so into Shutter Island is because I can see myself in that character, right? That that drive for justice, that drive for, for fixing things that had been broken in life is something that runs kind of universally in in the human condition versus inception. I'm like, I can't, I can't connect with this guy. You know, so when you watch, you think it's such a small thing, like this person talking about Jesus every conversation or whatever it is, but it's like when you watch it, you can only come to con- two conclusions that you're a terrible Christian and that everyone else talks about Jesus every right, 30 seconds right, and you're right. just that terrible. Or this character simply does not exist yeah. in real life. Yeah. Agreed. For sure. But I, I don't know. It's a, it, it's one of those things where it's all about being immersed in, yeah. in the character. Exactly. Yeah. And it, and you, yeah, you're sitting there watching and you're like, how would, how would I react? Or if I was this person, per- yeah, like what what would they be doing? Are you trying to figure out what's coming next, or how, in what moment are they going to respond in a certain way, or what are they going to react in that situation? I know I probably just repeated myself ten different times or whatever, but you know, like that's that's what it's about. And then how all the other elements of the film are responding to those moments, like yeah. the shots, the music. Um, the, the way that the, you know, the background actors are even reacting or does this scene even seem like legitimate? Like, are they in a situation or scenario? That's possible. Exactly. Like, would that conversation be happening there or would it be in some other place or would, why would they even be in that situation or whatever it is? And it's like, I've found myself in Christian movies. Like, I just have to roll my eyes at situations. Cause I'm like, dude, they're, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like something like, man, they're sitting in a drive through window and all of a sudden they just like have sp- a 10 minute conversation. Exactly. Like, it's like, to... they're going through to order a cheeseburger or something. And it's I don't, just big pause. Right. And they it's have just... a long conversation and then it's like, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I get. It. So, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of unravel this in pieces, but I know that the number one thing that I hear from people all the time is that you shouldn't critique Christian film. I want to touch a little bit on that because they say, well, they're trying to do this for Jesus mm-hmm. and and it's it's something kind of that that movie versus ministry mentality. And that's, you know, we're going to break down why, you know, we think there's a difference between movies and ministries and why there needs to be 
some kind of clear distinction when somebody's creating a project, what this is. But before we dive into that, how would you respond to the people that say, oh, well, if you're doing it for Jesus, it shouldn't be critiqued. Like if this is a Christian movie, you know, everybody always says I'm too critical, which is literally why I right. bought this hoodie. Cause <laughs> right. I'm like, I am, I, I'm just telling people up front, like, Hey, I am hard on people because I want people to be hard on me. Yeah. Like if I make a video and if you see something that you're like, Hey, this really is terrible. As an audience, I'm telling you, I would love to get an email. Like, don't be mean to me and tell me I'm worthless. <laughs> but if you're like, hey, your your color grading seems a little blue, or no, I say blue because we're in blue backdrop, but whatever it is, like, I would genuinely love constructive yeah. criticism and feedback. But a lot of Christians act like somehow you were being unchristlike by simply pointing out the kinds of things that we're talking about. Yeah, so, they're they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that that that's the de- that's it. That's yeah, it. move on. No. To the next. Um, if if you're not willing to be critiqued, then like, don't then you're art. yeah you're yeah. not you're not you're not trying to reach people because it's like if you're just and I will say it depend it also depends on what kind of project you're making but if you're making a movie that has a budget and especially you know one that's in the millions or hundreds of thousands of dollars like you have to be critiqued yeah. because then to me you're wasting the money that if it is supposed to be for Jesus I mean you're wasting that money yeah because what's the point in Mm -hmm. making art or a film or whatever it may be if you're trying to reach a generation of people to come to church or get or come to know christ or or whatever it may be if the only people you're reaching are people who are already christians yeah like you're wasting you're wasting your time you're wasting your resources and it's like if you're only reaching churches then you've missed the point because it's like if you're showing a movie in in your youth group majority of the youth People are know what a good movie looks like. Exactly, they know what a good movie looks yeah. like, and they have gone to see the you know all range the, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. Avengers and all these other things that are like man they love it and they can't wait for the new one to come out and it's like they see this Christian movie and they just talk through it yeah because they're like this is this is dumb this like is... this isn't this isn't fun uh, it's not a good movie and so if you're not willing to be critiqued and you, if you think like oh you know this is just for you know this is for the mission of Jesus this is to to advance the kingdom or whatever whatever it may be. Um, then, like honestly, like don't don't release it. Yeah. Or or only show it to your church or whatever <clears throat> it may be. Because if you're not gonna if you're not willing to be critiqued, which means you're not willing to get better, which means your stuff is always gonna be the same. And for me, I would say like if you aren't wanting to be critiqued, don't ask me to buy a ticket. Yeah. That, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, like, yeah. If you want to create a passion project, like I am way less uh, likely to be hard on if I'm scrolling through YouTube and somebody's uploaded a short film, a Christian short film or whatever it is, you know, I'm not going to go ham sandwich right, on, exactly. on the critique yeah, because yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. you didn't ask me to purchase this. Yep. You didn't ask for eight ninety nine or whatever the ticket film was. Mm-hmm. You didn't ask for my time. You didn't ask for any of these things, you know, but the point where, you know, and I, I gave this critique, um, in the, the documentary, I can't even remember the name of it, but the documentary I did a review on not that long ago, you know, I said in my review i said if if this had if this had been on netflix where i didn't have to pay for it i wouldn't give it the score that i gave it i think i gave like a two out of five or whatever but the reason was because you asked for full ticket price yeah and if you were going to ask the same amount that the avengers or mission impossible and not that i am expecting the same production quality because every movie is going to differ a little bit like the new movie with uh uh, joaquin phoenix that's his name right yeah he's gonna be he's gonna be the new joker and i've watched i've watched a couple of screenshots or whatever and you can tell that it's not a high budget film like it's just him becoming the Joker yeah. in his interpersonal relationships. I'm sure that, but I'm sure the budget of that is infinitely smaller than the Avengers. So it's not like it has to be special effects and all these ridiculous things. But I believe that as a art creator, at the point where you start charging people is the point where you have now upped your own responsibility to create something that is worthy of that ticket price. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I agree for sure. So put it out for free. Yeah, if, put it out for if, free. If, if, put if, it out. Put it out on YouTube. Put it out it, on Vimeo. Whatever it may be. Um, yeah. Or charge a dollar. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like there, and that's the thing is I feel like movies are one of the only places, especially in mainstream Christianity where there isn't a tier, like a price tier, right? Cause if you put out an EP as an artist, right. And it's not a full album. You realize that you recorded it in your closet. Right. You know what I mean? With like, instead of a pop filter, you had a sock over your mic. You're going to ask one ninety nine yeah, for that yeah. EP on, on, uh, iTunes. Mm-hmm. If you were somebody like Andy Minio and you put a hundred thousand dollars into that album, you're going to ask twelve ninety nine dollars for right. the same amount of songs. Right. And the production quality has an expectation of being higher. So even if these movies to me were less expensive and not being released in theaters yeah. at that price. Yeah, no, that's, and that's true too. Well, and what's even fascinating to me, um, is like, 
even when like God's Not Dead came out for the first time, I, whenever four or five, well, I can't remember how long ago it was, whatever. Um, but like even like they wanted to have this whole package for churches right. or whatever. And um, so this is like after it was in theaters and, you know, it's this is for you to buy this package to show to your church. And it came with like a poster and like maybe I think like some like some series or something with it. Right. But it was still like $150 for all of it or whatever. And it's like, but, but the thing is, is like churches eat it up, oh, which is fascinating yeah. to me because it's like, um, I don't know. I just, I just feel, and we accept it, I guess, is we think. We create the problem. We are, our, our thoughts are. We, this is this is a Christian movie. It's not going to be as good, which to me is a problem. We come in with low expectations. Exactly. And so, if we were to up the ante a little bit and up our standards, then I think the issue. I mean, it wouldn't be solved immediately, but through time and through you know the future, um, I think the movies that Christians or churches or whoever produce and they make will be a lot better. But it starts with the consumer, yeah. with us realizing, hey. That's a bad movie. Yeah. Like, and, and us just being honest and being like, hey, let's critique it. Um, the acting wasn't great. The editing wasn't great. The yeah. story could have been better. Um, which, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not expecting every Christian film that comes out or, every, I mean, every film that comes out to be, the, you know, the next best film because it's not. Right. But we, if you, to me, if I leave a movie and I think that was, you know, that was time well spent, it was a good movie. Which majority of movies, yeah, 90, 93, 94 percent of movies we see, which for us is more like 10% for yeah, some reason, yeah. uh, that we see, I walk out and I'm like, yes, I enjoyed it. I'm glad I spent money on that. But so far, I think there's been like one Christian film that I've seen that yeah. I thought that was time well spent. Oh, we're going to talk about that. Yeah, we'll get so, to it. We'll so, get to so, it. So, so in, that, in the conversation of a movie versus ministry, do you think that there is there needs to be not a rating system? I mean, that sounds cheesy, but some way, like I'll give uh, the video that we were referencing before on YouTube talks a lot about the Kendrick brothers, right? And they're pastors and they admit they have quotes all over the place that say, you know, we're not, we're not filmmakers, we're pastors who happen to use films yeah. to preach the gospel, which I'm not against. Like, I, I think, you know, um, what's that the whole book? Um, the Cross and the Switchblade. I think at some point that was made into like a short uh, indie film or whatever. I didn't get to see it. But those are the kinds of stories that I think, you know, preach the gospel in a yeah. strong way. Yeah. And I'm not against video movies as ministries, but I do think there has to be in the same way that the secular movie industry is broken up into like mainstream and indie or action and whatever. I think there needs to be some kind of division between this is a movie made by a Christian yes. or this is a Christian movie because yeah. I think there's so many things that I'm like, the video that we, we talked about uh, has a long section about uh, Christian movies holding your hand and telling you what to think right. versus a good movie that leaves space for the person to make decisions and kind of come to conclusions. And that to me is kind of the difference because a movie that is a ministry, you, you, I mean, it sounds bad, but you don't want people to come to their own conclusion about Jesus right, as far exactly. as like what they should believe. Yeah. But at the same time, a quality movie that isn't exclusively a ministry needs to leave room for people to say, what do I think about this? So right. what are your thoughts on on that division, how we should make that that clear and that, you know, creative difference between the two? Yeah, I think, well, I think there definitely should be division. Like, I think if you are creating a film or something that is, man, like the whole point is basically like a Sunday sermon or right. message or whatever that is wrapped up in an hour and a half long film, like that should be one of its own. Like people are going into it knowing that scripture is going to be referenced the whole time, yeah. that the whole point is to say, you know, like Jesus is, Jesus is, you know, the savior of the world and he is the one who's going to fix all your problems. Yeah. Like, and that should be a movie in its own. But at the same time, I don't think that you, it's fair. Like, let's say you have a movie that is more like Christian influence. Right. That's a little bit better. Like Passion of the Christ. Exactly. Didn't tell you what to think about exactly. Jesus necessarily as much as just presented you the story of who he was. Exactly. And so like that, that was, a, I mean, that's a well-made film. Like, yeah. and it's rated R for a reason because it's like, yeah. it's intense. Like yeah, you watch it, it and you're like, man, this doesn't seem like, you know, it's this just, seems real. Right. Somebody exactly. got crucified. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, and so it's one of those things that like, that's, it's not fair to have that film in wrapped in category. category with like God's Not Dead. You know, if you love God's Not Dead, that's great. You know, but it's, it's, it's I, I don't know, to me, to me, if I was a filmmaker, which, you know, one day maybe I yeah. will be, who knows. Um, if I was a filmmaker making a Christian film, 
the way that I would probably go about it is like you talked about not telling the viewer this is how it's supposed to be. Right. It's leaving it up to their own interpretation, which like, so Christopher Nolan is my favorite director. Love him. You know, he did Inception, Interstellar, all the Dark Knight movies, Prestige, all these other movies. And what I love about his films is almost, I mean, almost every, not everyone, but a lot of them, it ends and you're like, whoa, like, well, what, what's the end of the story? Like, what, what actually happened? Like, what is coming next? Right. And, like, he's even said, like, he doesn't want th the movies to end with you knowing everything. Like, he wants you to walk away from the film thinking, what's coming next? Like, and, and let you try to decide, you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go try and figure this out or whatever it is. You know, I spent, like, weeks. Inception? In, with the, yeah, I was, was <laughs> I was like, I'm incepted, you know? And it's, so it's just like... And I kind of think about it, you know, like with music, you know, I love music. And uh, so like I, in my favorite band, I know you, <laughs> I know you're like, this whatever. This going to go bad. So, so Switchfoot, love Switchfoot. And I just, their music is great. They were on a hiatus earlier, but man, they're coming back out October 19th. I can't drama wait. is over. I know. Um, but uh, so they're all Christian guys. All of them are Christian guys. But in their music, they don't sing directly about Jesus. Yeah. It's not directly about God, but you can tell from their music that they believe in something more and that there's something more out there. Yeah. But it's the the listener, the viewer who is the one who's going to go and try and discover that. Yeah. And so with I think um with Christian film and like ministry and, and separating the movies like I think Christian filmmakers would be better off with making like like a Christian idea of a movie, yeah. you know, where it's like and I know some people would probably disagree with this, but like maybe not technically reference Jesus in the movie, right? But reference the idea that there is something more, or, yeah. or or certain like real life scenarios, and then people will leave the movie feeling inspired, feeling that there is something more, so they can go in, look at it, and see what's next. And hopefully, the goal of the movie is to like get them in a church or yeah. get them in a ministry or of some sort. Which you know, it can always go back and forth. But um, I think, like you said, like separating it from like a, this is this is not a sermon in a movie. Right. This is a this is a movie with a storyline and characters that are believable right. that represent an idea of what Christianity is all about. So to be clear, I think both of us think that Christian movies or Christian ministry through movies, I mean, what should exist. I mean, you look at any of my creative projects, right, that I put out. The reason I pick the medium that I pick of, you know, putting together clips and different things and, and making, I mean, they're basically like two minute short films yeah, yeah. is what I'm doing. So I'm not against the idea of ministry through movies, like my What is Truth, which you should go check out in case you haven't. I'll link it down below. But it's basically a a gospel presentation about, you know, who is who do you say Jesus yeah, is? Yeah. That's the only thing that matters. But I think people kind of don't understand the difference between a movie and a ministry. And sometimes those things can cross. And that's what I would encourage, like, if there's any people that are, are into cinematography, any young people that are looking to make a movie understand that maybe maybe you don't want to make um something that is like blatantly christian right uh but i i think that if you do what you do with excellence you will be given the platform mm -hmm. to be able to to preach that gospel you know the thing that sticks out to me is like andy minio um one of my favorite favorite christian artists people give him a hard time about you know not saying jesus in every song anymore but what stuck out to me was you know in the same way that we do in movies, we also have kind of a lower bar for Christian music comparatively yeah, yeah, to secular music. Yeah. And the first time I heard Andy Minio, I was like, this guy's just as good as a secular right. rapper is. And he got better and better with every single album. And he ended up opening for Fetty Wap. I'm going to say that. I sound like the <laughs> worst white guy ever. Uh, you know, Fetty Wap. Uh, <laughs> Get better rap names. That's just like who anyway. Uh, so and he is not a Christian. Yeah. Uh, very secular. Says mm -hmm. a lot of things that would make my mom blush in his not Andy Minio Fetty Wap. Uh, says a lot of things that are very distasteful in his songs. But he ended up Andy ended up opening that entire tour with that guy. Yeah. So he was literally paid by a secular artist to travel around the country. And though not every single song talks about Jesus, he definitely does talk about his faith in yeah. his music. And so a secular, uh, you know, production company and concert venue and all of these things not only gave him the platform to 
a million people probably that would have never heard his message, but they paid him cash to do it. Yeah. And that to me is like the, the best illustration of get good at your craft yeah. and then slowly implement your faith into that craft. And I promise that you'll get that opportunity to be able to preach. For sure. And I think, I mean, you talked about this earlier in one of your podcasts or one of your two. two you ones. watched one. Yeah. Mm, <laughs> um, where we talked about Chris Pratt. Yeah. So like yeah. Chris Pratt, not all of his movies, they're not, they're not Christian, they're not always clean, you know, yeah. they're not always clean, but he used his platform to be able to go to, I think it was the MTV movie Awards, something. Yeah. And sure it wasn't, he didn't like preach the gospel or whatever, but he was able to Same use, course, yeah. yeah, exactly. He was able to use that platform, which millions of people view and millions of people love him and like look up to him. And he was like, Hey, you know, God is real. Yeah. Like this, this is what life is about. And so, like you said, like get good at it and then slowly, you know, maybe not have to be slowly, but you know, work yeah. in the gospel, work in faith. It's like, I it always makes me think of in first Corinthians, like when Paul talks about like, be, like kind of like, you know, some people don't really like it, but you know, he like changed kind of who, who he was, was right? to be able to fit the crowd that he was surrounded himself with. Right. And that's the whole point. Like if you're making a Christian art or Christian film or whatever it may be, and you're not reaching people who aren't Christian, then you're missing the point of it. And so like sometimes the the platform, the media platform is gonna have to be a little bit different than what you think it is to be able to reach the audience that you're wanting to actually reach. And I think Chris Pratt is a great segue because the thing that interests me is I know a lot of Christians would say, well, he's a Christian, but he's in movies with, and then names all of these things that happen in movies he's in. Now, I haven't seen every Chris Pratt movie. I'm sure somebody in the comment section is going to like link to a clip of him right. doing something. Like in pri- oh, well, the Prisoners, Passengers. Passengers, something. Like a, so, yeah. you know, but the majority of his films that I've seen, he is not the one himself as an actor engaging in that or... Um, his character isn't advocating a lot of, of you know, yeah. terrible behavior. And that's what I think is interesting. And that's my next question is, is it possible, considering how Christians object to that, with like, oh, Chris Pratt shouldn't be in blah, blah, whatever. Is it possible for Christian movies to be profitable without being sunshines and rainbows and all of these things? Because I think the big misconception, and again, make sure to check out the video down below um, that I'm referencing, but it gives a list of how much money Christian movies have made. And some of them were 15 million, 17 million, 60 million. million. I mean, most people think of Christian movies as this tiny little, like, oh, isn't that sweet? You made a Christian movie. Right. And they'll gross $60 million. Yeah. And so, you know, a lot of people, I think... Uh, kind of don't realize that there's a business side, yeah. you know what I mean, to, to making film that you, unless you get somebody that's just like, I believe in your dream and here's $50 million, like you have to turn a profit. So the, the question that I want to pose to you, is it possible for Christian movies to show the darker side or, you know, cause it's a fine line. You don't want to encourage negative behavior. Right, but if you're right, going right, to right. show real life, you can't have everybody in there in the movie, being like this perfect saint. Yes. So how do you walk that line without missing out on the entire Christian market? Because most of the time, Christian movies make a good chunk of their money because churches take an entire congregation of people to go see it. So if a Christian movie isn't family-friendly, is it ever going to make any money? Right. I would say yes. And the answer, like the reason I say that is because, so Passion of the Christ, which I realized, you know, I think it came out like 2002, a long time ago, whatever. Wow, yeah. Um, it is the still, to this day, the number one, like, highest grossing rated R film ever. I think and, Deadpool just beat it. Oh, did it? I think the second okay. one, I think our, maybe, I, maybe I could be did. wrong. But anyway, top but two. Still, so top for two. 15, you know, 16 years, whatever, right. it was the highest grossing rated R film. And you wouldn't take your Sunday school class to see it. But I think people would be the age where they that's would true. is probably lower than that's true. That you, I would, t- I would take a twelve-year-old or a thirteen-year-old to see Passion of the Christ. Right. I wouldn't take a thirteen-year-old to see Deadpool. <laughs> you shouldn't be watching. That's a terrible movie. I'm just saying, like, if, if yeah. I'm, I'm going off, it is a little bit different. Right. No, and that is true. That is true. And like, I, I, I know, like, so like, God's not dead. I think, and that it said it made like sixty million dollars. It grossed sixty million dollars something, which that's really, really good. Um, and like you said, like I don't think it would attract, like you wouldn't take your youth group to go see something that was, you know, darker or whatever. But right. then at the same time, with the way that I kind of see ministry 
shifting. Right. Like not 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 that you know we're not st- still preaching the gos- gospel or whatever. But I think you know I've, I've read so many um, different articles and listened to so many different podcasts that this generation of people are so turned off by church because yeah. they feel like everyone has a mask on, yeah. that no one is being genuine, that no one is being real, and so. Um, I know. So you look at the you look at the facing the giants and all those other movies like that, and they're gonna make a couple million dollars, several whatever. I don't know, you know, right. whatever. But I do think if someone were to branch out and to try something a little bit darker, something that introduced real life and real scenarios that people are going through, I think they would be pleasantly surprised with how many people would turn out. Yeah. Just because you would attract more people other than just church members yeah. or other than just Christians, and it's like. I know for myself, I want to see a Christian film that talks about real life issues. Because the thing is, is like, man, every person, everybody is going through something. Yeah. Some are way more, you know, intense scenarios and situations than other people. Or everyone's been had something terrible happen in their past, or something that they regret in their past. And like you said, like in these a lot of Christian films, like the Christians are like the heroes of the story, and these people that are like. Um, never do anything wrong. They're saints. They have their life all put together. Everything is in order, but that's not reality. Yeah. Like that's not truth. And I think if if there were there was a movie that kind of stretched out and sh- showed that, I think that they would be pleasantly surprised. And there was a movie. I don't know if you want to go to it now sure. or not. But it's so like, and I talked about, I referenced it earlier, kind of just that I saw a movie that was good. Uh, but like I can only imagine came out this past year. And uh, I cried like a little girl. Dude. I'm, I'm not going It was so, I was in my seat, like, fi- oh, it was so bad. Oh my goodness. So bad. Dude, I, I rarely cry in movies, but like, it was one I of those I told like, you you were going to cry. He, oh, we haven't talked about this. I told him he needed to first go see time this right movie. Here. Yeah. Yeah. You were experiencing something together. It was so touch. Although I hate to burst the bubble, but it was actually co-produced with Lionhead's film, which is like n- not a Christian studio, has yeah. a lot of money. No, but I. I'm right. Still giving credit. Still right, giving right, right. credit. The fact that there were any Christians involved. Yeah. And that it was a Christian story. Yeah. Uh, but I think I think you you know you make a good point, which if you haven't seen God or God's not dead, if you haven't seen, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Thank you. You need to go see it because yeah. here's what I thought was interesting was the way that they handled conflict. Yes. You know. So I'm going to make a long winded reference here, but one of the things that stuck out to me was in um, in Fireproof. Right, they have this this storyline of a guy struggling in his marriage, and they allude that a lot of this struggling and fighting comes from his porn addiction. Right, and in the film, the way that they kind of go about expressing or or showing that is like the most graphic or whatever thing or hardest hitting thing is that the wife comes home and he's on a laptop or a computer and is like just rushing, right. you know, and the camera's facing him, cam- camera showing the wife walking in and him trying to close the window. And I'm not suggesting that the camera should have been like pointing towards the <laughs> computer showing what, but my point is like, if a problem has gotten bad enough in your marriage like that, that it's causing you to talk about divorce, like there is such a real and, and, and valuable story to be told there that is so much more than some guy frantically trying to click out of a yeah. click out of a thing. And that's what I liked about, I can only imagine is, is when you hear the arc in a Christian movie of a dad struggling with a son, right? You expect there to be some yelling, right. I'm out of here, slam the door and walk away. But like when he starts hitting people with plates and yeah. stuff, I am yeah. like, Absolutely. Because that's like, you know, and I can relate because me and my dad's relationship was really, really hard. And there was a point in our relationship where I stood there with a butcher knife. I'm like, let's go. You know what I mean? And that's the reality. Not that all people's relationships are to that point. But, you know, that movies are supposed to show kind of the extreme side of life. I mean, that's what makes it exciting is the yeah. fact that that people can see kind of what that edge of the the, the cliff when you're about to jump is right. really like. And I thought I thought that movie did a great job. So when we're talking about uh, the grittier or darker side, I don't think that necessarily means less appropriate. Or, right. You know what I mean? Or, right. Or like you don't have to have like nudity sex or scenes. sex scenes yeah. or all this cussing or anything in it. It's just referencing real topics. Re- exactly. Yeah. Things that are believable, things that are going on in today's life. Like I, it, it, you know, it's, it's shocking to me, you know, as I've gotten older, the amount of issues that people have, like even down to like infertility, like that's not talked about a lot. Yeah. I had no idea the amount of people who struggled with infertility. Yeah. And it's like, I know people personally who uh, 
like it makes them feel bad about themselves. It makes them feel like they're not good enough or like, you know, that something is like wrong with them, but it's like, that's not it at all. And it's like, and I'm not saying there, you know, there has to be a movie that is all about infertility or whatever, but it's just like talking about these ideas that aren't necessarily like talked about in church culture that much or things that maybe are are frowned upon and and introducing them in a way that is believable in a way that is handled in real life. Like, as you said, in fireproof, like talks about pornography and a porn addiction, like they're trying to reference. And it's very vague, very unrealistic. Trying to reference like real life situations that a lot of men and women, you know, struggle with, with, but it's like doing it in a way that is believable. Like you said, like, um, he was sitting there at his laptop with, you know, the, the door to his back, He's like sitting no one... in the living room right. of his house when he has kids and a wife. Right. And it's like, this is, this movie was put out during cell phones. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and I, I understand that's a weird thing to like <laughs> right. nitpick but on. It's not, yeah. Yeah. But it, 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 it's about immersion mm-hmm. of if somebody is really going, because a big part of the difficulty of a porn addiction is that shame and that loneliness yeah, yeah. and wanting to remove yourself from the people that would keep you accountable. So while you may say, well, why in the world would you care that the scene happens with him in the living room, the wife is coming home, whatever, those kinds of things, because it doesn't speak to the reality. Yeah. There is such a darker truth behind that. And so when it's like, during the daytime and out in the open and in the living room, that's literally a great contradiction to the truth of the situation that right. guy would have been going through. Right, 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 right. So yeah, that's a I weird, agree. I know it's a weird, uh, it is weird, weird thing to, to nitpick on, but I do think that kind of stuff is important. And the, the uh, uh, infertility that you referenced, I think one of the most frustrating things to me is we have to create storylines that are like, you know, and I'm not dogging on Facing the Giants was actually one of the better ones as far as the ones that I don't think were very good. But, you know, Facing the Giants, I'm like, you told the story about a football team. And I get it. It was like the Christian version of Remember the Titans kind of thing. Yeah. Like, I, I get the sellability of that story. But, like, I think the story of Abraham and uh, Sarah, like yeah. that, that of being in that age and feeling like I can never have kids. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, if you're having that feeling of like, okay, I had dreamed my entire life of, of this thing and it's never going to happen. Look at what age I am. And then this moment where God's like, nope, it is going to happen. And that internal struggle, like I think that would connect so much more with people that aren't Christians. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because not everybody's going to relate to to football necessarily. Not right. everybody's going to relate to being at a Christian school. Right. Not everybody, you know what I mean? But everybody relates with, I had a dream that died. And everybody could find hope in the fact that God can bring that dead dream back to life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. So I've got I've got a question for you. Oh great. Friend. Oh. Okay. Uh so it's kind of kind of back to like the movie versus ministry we talked about just a little bit ago. Um so we you know we talked about the idea that you know there's some like movies that are basically a sermon wrapped into right. it in movies. So do you think that they should can we should continue making movies like that um and put them in theaters or should we like sell those strictly to churches and if we're going to release a movie a Christian film that is in theaters worldwide or whatever, should it be more like what we just talked about, where it talks about um, reality, you know, real life situations that that is is like you watch the you watch the trailer and you're like, yeah, I want to go see that. It's tough because it's kind of a multi part thing. I think that there needs to be an identification, some letter or some kind of thing we use, some system to identify what is a movie made by that is safe for the family right. or safe for Christians to watch. Like it's and CH-PG? That kind of thing. <laughs> Christian yeah, PG? Like, no. Not like a regular. Well, no, no, no. you laugh, but like I remember going to, my parents getting super mad because we went to go see Ants and it was like PG and it and cussed I, yeah. like 11 so, times. Yeah, yeah, and you're yeah. like, it's a movie about ants, you My know? parents were also upset about it. <laughs> the Christian life. All right. Uh, but here's the thing. And I think it could benefit the Christian world is once you make that distinction, Napoleon Dynamite was made on what? 300,000? Something real cheap. Something really... And it made like four or five million or something like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and so I think we would benefit the industry by separating those two because if... If I know that this is an illustrated sermon, my production expectations are going to be infinitely lower. Right. Yeah, yeah, you know that I mean? makes like, sense. I won't mind if you use stock footage. Like, I use a lot of stock yeah, footage yeah. in the stuff that I do in telling a story, and it's so much cheaper than trying to get a film oh, throughout for sure, and for doing sure. all that stuff. And so I think if somebody was like, this is an illustrated sermon, mm-hmm. we're going to put it on Pure Flix yeah. for people that are wanting, to, or Netflix, or, yeah. or whatever subscription service they can get it on, we're also going to offer it as a purchasable, purchasable package 
uh, four churches, which I think a lot of, if you're a movie executive out there, I think you're missing an opportunity because I think if you packaged it as a sermon with sermon slides and like a whole thing, I think there would be a lot more value to that. I know yeah. a couple of Which is like God's that. Not Dead did that, yeah. Right, They and, and, but that's where I think that stuff should be. Put it on YouTube, put it on Vimeo after it's been out for a year and you've recouped whatever money you need to recoup and, and let it be a ministry and worry less about about some of the other stuff that we've been talking about. I mean, put out the best quality you can, but we need to be able to understand the same way that you wouldn't go to the Sundance Festival, movie festival, and expect a Marvel quality movie. Right. In the same way you would have a kind of a category of film that is more an illustrated sermon than yeah. it is a movie. And then on the other side, if you decide to make a movie, release it to theaters and do that whole promotion, but make sure the quality is there. And I think that that you could easily, if you made a three hundred thousand dollar film or or illustrated sermon, right, and and you sold it to churches, I think if it was good enough, you could recoup that money and not have a problem. Yeah, you know. But obviously, if you're making a, a movie for a million dollars, I don't know that you're going to be able to move that much product to churches or pure flicks or whatever. But I do think as as Christian media grows. I think there are going to be more services because like right now uh, I'm, I'm really big into stand-up comedy and I've heard comedian after comedian interview say now that we have Hulu and Netflix mm-hmm. and Amazon Prime and like there's like five different or six different huge streaming services. And now they say the people that never used to get a special are now getting specials because yeah. everybody's competing for exclusive content. Right. And so right now Pure Flix is pretty much the only platform that we have that is offering those kinds of things. And and please understand me, I appreciate everything that Pure Flix is doing and creating an industry for us. Mm-hmm. I just wish that they would bring in some people that had some different expertise for it. Um, but overall, I think as those industries develop, the bar of what is a releasable special is going to change yeah. as far as if you're going to get paid a million dollars for a Christian comedy special. Because, I mean, you know, there are some Christian comedians. I, I know that I saw, what's that guy's name? Uh, the guy that just did the the pastor draft video. Oh, John Christ. Right. Yeah. He sells out some oh, pretty yeah. large venues. And, yeah. and as his influence grows, he may end up selling out a stadium and yeah. selling that special to Pure Flix or Netflix right. for a million dollars. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think, and that's kind of brings us to our, our last point, our segue, the future of Christian media. What would you like to see as far as where we're going, the change that you'd like to make, uh, what are what are important things to you? Maybe some specific Bible stories you'd like to be told, or just stories in general that you think would make compelling movies. Like, what what are your thoughts on the future? Yeah, um, I think the first thing for the future is us, you know, just raising the bar for what Christian media, Christian film yeah. specifically looks like. Like, if I'm going to go to a theater to see a movie, I want it to be movie quality. Movie quality. I want it to be the same quality as the Avengers. I get you're not going to have a two hundred million dollar budget or whatever, but like. I mean, you can make you can make a, a good film without the CGI. In a Christian movie, I don't know. I mean, unless you were telling some right. crazy story, you know, like, I, I realize well, you would there's been a lot of movies recently that have used no-name actors. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. the new Star Wars movie named oh, exactly. two people yeah. that I had never even heard of. Yeah, like the only, like, yeah, used, like, the girl from Game of Thrones or whatever. And then oh, had, well, then she, well was she, little, she was a little yeah. better. I, I, hadn't, I didn't watch Game in of a, Thrones. She's so. in a select... Um, audience. Like, okay, what about the dude? Had he been in no, some big... No, no, no. Okay. I, I had not heard of him before. So I would assume the writing and the acting, if you find people that aren't as... Because Christians don't care who exactly. the actor is. Well, it, if they're good. Exactly. I, I, don't, I, don't, I couldn't give a yeah. flying rib about well, who... it, Exactly. And it has to, like... You have to... You have to start out somewhere. Yeah. You know, like, some of the best yeah. actors, like, they started from a movie that, you know, no one really heard of, but it's because they have to start somewhere. And it's like, I think... And so, like, going back to I Can Only Imagine... Almost everyone in that movie was a no-name, besides like yeah. Dennis Quaid, who's like a, maybe a B, C-list actor at this point. Sure, he's cheap now. Yeah, but I thought it was, I thought it was smart using him because at first it brought in like some like famili- familiarity, exactly. Yeah. Like you kind of knew and people. I I like Dennis Quaid. Oh, I'll never forget the he's rookie. He's great in that, <laughs> right? That was a good movie. It was. was a good it movie. was. Yeah. Um, but like. And so, but the, all the other actors, they did a really good job. Yeah. Like they were believable. And I think that's one thing for the future is like, and I may be wrong when I, when I say this, but whenever Facing the Giants first came out, what I had heard was some of the characters in that movie were just members of the church. Yeah. And, I heard of that too. And I could be wrong, you know, don't, you know, throw stones at us or whatever. But like, if that's, if that's the case, like I realize you're on a short budget but I think spending the money where it counts is the number one like priority. Yeah. And acting, 
you I mean acting is so huge because yeah. that's that's the thing that's going to sell it. That's the thing that's going to make the story believable is how yeah. the characters are talking, how they're responding to different things, their comedic timing, whatever it may be. And with that, like if you're just saying, hey, you know, that was good enough. Yeah. Then it's just like, well, do you really, is your film just going to be good enough? You know what I mean? Well, what, and, was that, what was that movie where the guy got his arm stuck? Ryan Reynolds, was he the... the no, uh, James Franco. James Franco. Well, there was there was 127 two hours. There were two, anyway. There was some film that came out not a super long time ago, but it was like 99 percent of the movie was a dude stuck in a rock. I think oh, there no, were no, two. No, no, no. So you're thinking of buried? He was stuck in a coffin or something like that. I, oh, don't, I, I don't didn't know. I didn't see the movie, but okay, stuck in a rock was James Franco 127 hours. Buried Ryan Reynolds was in a coffin underground for the whole. Literally, he was the only actor the whole movie. Okay, and he has like a, I don't know if that's the movie you're talking about. I, anyway, there's several movies like that, and that to me is just a good point of. When you have a quality actor, it doesn't have to be a big name, just somebody yeah. that is good. Like you can, that's kind of the, the finagling is like, if you don't have the special effects, which I don't expect you to like, and you don't have the sets. Cause you said like, oh, they're using people from their church, which I get, but it's like, I would rather half as many actors, half as many locations and half yes. as many sets. Yeah. If you could just get somebody that was a phenomenal exactly. actor. And someone who's like bringing the intensity, bringing it. And you're like, yeah, Ugh, man, like what's coming next or whatever, you know? And with that, like scoring uh the Music. soundtrack yeah. well and my thing is like um i realized like you know there's incredible composers out there like hans zimmer my favorite whatever you're Probably obviously not gonna get him yeah. but i you can't imagine the amount of talent that is out there who is just looking for an opportunity and man they'll they'll score your entire movie for you know a thousand bucks if that and yeah. it's like they're stupid good yeah and it's like I think, and obviously, you know, I, I don't know anybody by name but it's just like um it, it's oh i think of like one guy i don't uh, he's like in North Carolina or something. His name's like Carolino or whatever. Yeah. And I listen to him on Spotify and he only has like, you know, three or 4,000 listens on his songs. So he's not that well, well known, I don't think. But he's good. But he's incredibly yeah. talented. And it's like, I think um, maybe these Christian films or whatever need to hire like a full-time like talent scout who's yeah. going to go out and find things find like this and, and find resources and tools to use. And with that, you know, like finding editors who understand the shots that need to be had and the, you know, the cinematographers and with that, the equipment, I think equipment is a big thing. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, you don't have to rent, you know, 10 different cameras, but if you had two solid like red epics or something that you could probably rent for, I don't know, 20 grand to film your movie. Well, I don't know how, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think, I, I think I looked at running a red epic and it was like, 2500 bucks a week right but that's i mean that's really not yeah you know what i mean yeah. they shot for those that don't know the red epic was they shot the hobbit on uh fast and furious fast movies. and furious i mean we're talking about like some serious serious movies right. so i think the as the barrier lowers i will hope that there are more more um you know things that even see like the camera we're using right now the canon c200 i've seen short film shot on that this camera was like eight thousand dollars new um, and I've seen short films shot on that that look a lot better yeah. than most Christian films. And yeah. I'm just like, you, you didn't yeah. have $8,000. I mean, you know what I mean? Like right. a million dollar project project, and you didn't have a, you know, $8,000 to buy a camera and another $5,000 yeah. to buy a really nice cinema lens. I just, mm -hmm. I struggled. So as far as I'm concerned, the future, uh, I want to see VR. I understand that's like, <laughs> we're talking like super long way off, right. but I do think that uh, movies as ministries will be incredibly effective mm -hmm. at the point where you can stand in the middle of a Bible story. Oh, like yeah. you, you think you think Passion of the Christ is brutal to watch? Imagine to being able like to being, like, feel like look there. up and yeah. see Jesus hanging on a cross and be like, oh, you're a ball, like a little yeah. girl the entire time. But I think people need to be pushing the boundaries as much as they can in as many areas yeah. as possible because I think that's what gains a lot of notoriety and a lot of attention from the secular media and the fact, you know, like Chris Pratt, he killed in his movies and now he's yeah. able to stand up and do, do incredible things. So before we go, give me your favorite movie of all time. Oh boy. And the worst movie you've ever oh, seen. Oh no. Uh, favorite movie. I'd probably have to say Inception. Like I know I, it's I not like bad. It really is no, 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 a good song. It's so good. Chris Nolan made it. It's so good. Uh, I don't know. And the top it, he was in reality at the end for all you debaters out there. I've, <laughs> Solved the the mystery for you. <laughs> the top obviously was gonna fall. It goes, ding, it ends right yeah, there. It's true. It's true. Uh, but yeah, I love Inception. Man, worst movie? Golly. Uh, I like try to like repress those. Are I'm you trying, trying to, to think. Forget? 
Uh, we saw the Reverend, Revenant. Yeah. It was so sad. It, it was it was pretty terrible. It was one of the best shot made films. Yeah, cinematography wise, phenomenal. Story wise, was maybe you loved it, but if you did, <laughs> whew. tell us in the comment section down below what your favorite movie and least favorite movie is. Yeah, along with the, one of the many things I'm sure you disagree right. with our critique of. Right? Is it wrong to say a Christian film is one of my least favorites? Uh, you, can <laughs> right, you can go right ahead. Uh, what's yours? Uh, my favorite movie ever probably is Shutter, Shutter Island. Island. Yeah. Uh, how, you just you can't. My oh no, is, it's it's top it's top ten for me for sure. I love movies that make me feel dumb at the end mm -hmm. when they when they do those flashbacks and you rewatch it again. Yeah, and you're like, and you realize that you're like, wow, they have been hinting at me this entire movie, and that's why I was so disappointed. I shouldn't have watched this film; it wasn't super super appropriate. But I was super disappointed with Fight Club because I thought that movie oh. was going to be the same thing where through yeah. the whole thing it gave. I didn't feel like it. Yeah, it, it gave hints no. on an equality level. Shutter Island did a much better. Job. Shutter Island did a much better. Uh, yeah, which if Leonardo DiCaprio, if you ever want to come on this podcast, we will have That's the right. best time. That's the right. Three of us talking about how phenomenal we your would films love are. to have you star in a Christian film. We think you would kill it, dude. You'd make a great David. Can I just throw that out there? You know, I was going to say King that King David would be phenomenal. I think a DiCaprio. great David movie. Is, is what we need. Because he's attractive and yeah. he's obviously like could kill somebody if you really For wanted sure. to. sure. Even so. if someone like did a cool like adaptation of like the modern day David story. I don't know. I think you could do some cool stuff. Like a king of like a, a country in Africa where yeah. they still like have kings or something. You know, right. Like South Maybe Africa. a president or something. A, I don't know. A president. Anyway, thank you, Connor, so much for coming on to the show. Thank you guys so much for listening to us just ramble for yeah, the last uh, about film. however long. But uh, I want to encourage, before we go, I want to encourage you, if you are a young person uh, that is, you know, interested in cinematography, in movies and those kinds of things, uh, make sure to to get involved. There's so many churches now that have incredible yes, media programs. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, if you're looking for somebody, shoot us an email at uh, info at onetruekingmedia.com. I will do my best to try to connect you with a church where you can do an intern program because I think as much as we dog on Christian media, we are both passionate about this, yeah, yeah. passionate about how many people we can reach mm -hmm. with the gospel using media. So don't let our uh, critiques discourage you instead jump in make things better because i can tell you there's a lot of like 13 year old youtubers that make better films like right. on, on their iphone i mean yeah, the kids yeah, are so yeah, much more yeah. talented now because they've grown up with that but yeah. anyway so let that be an encouragement until next time we love you guys very much and we'll catch you on the next one Bye bye